Welcome back. Uh, new backdrop, new shirt, since a lot of people hated the old one. Thanks, Mom. And I got a few things to talk about before we dive right into it. First of all, thank you very much for the support over the past few days, and of course over the life of the channel. I mean, it's it's really incredible what uh, what has been accomplished by you guys. And um, thanks for watching, and thanks for all the support. It it really it really means a lot. Um, the second part is, is I'm kind of looking for a vehicle to put that three valve technology on. I want to be a little bit more focused built into a, into a vehicle. So I'm deciding between either a Miata, uh, an NA Miata, or a something with an LS, probably either, either a Catfish Camaro or a, um, like a C5 Corvette, uh, just because those are two of the most readily available and common cars out there. So you at home, if you want to try it, it's, it's there for you to try. So let me know in the comments below which of those two you think would be the best option. I'm kind of leaning Miata just because I already have a Corvette. I already have some European stuff. Um, I don't really have any JDM stuff in the garage right now, and I think it'd be kind of fun. Um, and my gut reaction was a bunch of European stuff, uh, like an old Lotus Elise or something, but I have too much random European stuff to work on right now. So yeah, let's get into what we're talking about today, which is essentially a cam tracking tool. Um, I was having a lot of difficulty figuring out what exactly that cam was doing in that little motor. And so I built this thing that slides over the top of it and gives me a full map of exactly what that camshaft is doing throughout an engine cycle and exports it into an Excel file and gives me a graph and everything like that. The beautiful part about that is I can just make that my camshaft. Uh, the way I have that software coded, um, I can literally just export the data that's coming out from that sender, import it directly into the cam profile for the software, and then it can just read off of that rather than developing an entirely new cam profile and I can tweak it from there. Uh, so I'm fairly excited to mess around with that a little bit, and I think it'll be the better option. This is essentially what I came up with. It's two potentiometers with arms on them. Uh, as the push rods move up and down, it moves the sliders up and down, uh, which in turn changes the resistance through the potentiometers, and the Arduino can read that and generate a signal going back and forth. Uh, there's a spring in the top of it as well to push, to keep it always pushed down uh, against the very bottom part that it can be on. So this is just the calibration sketch. And if we go to tools, serial monitor, you can see that it tells us our intake values for the intake. And if we move both of these all the way to the top, it tells us our values there as well. And that's how, I mean, you can run any different size uh, potentiometer in there because we calibrate it um, for what it's doing. Now if we rotate this counterclockwise, we can see that this this rotates that right like it should. It's about here that I realized I had no way to mount the position servo for the crankshaft. Um, so I just put a clamp on it, braced against that, and then put one of the test pieces underneath it to uh, hold it up. And uh, now it works. Now it shows position. All right. Both of those are plugged in, hooked up, everything should work. If we go serial monitor, should be doing that. And we're going to rotate this counterclockwise for a few cycles. And um, then we'll export the data. 
So if we look at the serial monitor here, first column is uh, degrees that the crank has traveled, um, second column is intake, and third column is exhaust uh, height in millimeters. So that's how much it's opening off of the baseline thing. And uh, we will uh, clean up that data here in just a minute. All right, so we got uh, a few hundred degrees on there. Something of note is that you can absolutely export data from the command line directly into Excel. However, I wanted to keep this as open as possible. A lot of people don't have Excel. A lot of people don't have, uh, depending on platform and stuff like that. So I'm just, I'm using this method because it kind of works. All right, so we take this, put all lines into Excel. We click our first column, we go to data and split text to columns which does that, and we select three of these. We go data, uh, remove duplicates, make sure the only that the first column is selected. This removes any, obviously I wasn't getting, a, I wasn't moving the wheel consistently. So this takes out all of the duplicate wheels. So we just get one after another and we click that. So we have 1600 unique rows of data so as you can see it's perfectly linear all the way through so now we got all the data imported i copied that into a new line and basically cleaned it up a little bit subtracted our base value basically 2.65 was our base value and now this is um, just that's our zero plane so if we look at our graphs um, we have the original data set which Gets, gives you an idea, but it is not uh, properly uh, properly calibrated, at least. Um, and there's a few outliers like this one and this one. Um, so with just a little bit of cleaning up, uh, basically taking out those outliers and then setting it to zero, we get a fairly nice graph. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, I think if I slowed down a little bit on turning and or got a little bit more consistent and got uh, these position numbers a little bit more exact. Also didn't use Amazon special, very cheap potentiometers that would help. And if we look at um, the, I believe this is 900 to 1600, uh, we have a very nice, uh, a very nice line. Now, why I went through and did all this is I, ha I now have all of my position data in millimeters and specific degrees for the control software. So I can plug all of this in. This is essentially a direct copy of the camshaft. So therefore I can just import all of this in and I don't have to calculate any of it out. Um, and I don't have to guess and everything like that. So this is a very nice metric for figuring out what, what the engine does during, over a period of time. And if we turn on uh, data labels, for this and data labels for this, you can see exactly how many millimeters that actually rises up at whatever individual point. So it tops out about 5.69 millimeters. This one's 5.66. Um, I originally said 5.5 uh, in the original design, so I'm glad that I was pretty close on that. Anyways, that's it for today. Uh, if you want to experiment around with a little bit of this, all of this is, of course, available in the comments below. Take a look at it, play around with it. Whatever engine I decide to go through and put uh, an actual car engine and put the system on, of course, I'll build a specific unit for mapping the cam just like this. But for right now, um, working, working with what I have, this works out pretty well. Thanks for watching. Quick little note, I know I put that code up for you guys to mess around with. Um, I'm actually going to commit to that here pretty soon uh, with an entirely redesigned system that's a lot cleaner, I think. So if you're thinking about downloading and messing around with it, give me a few days to get that updated before you, because I, I'm changing pretty much everything. Those of you who have already submitted commits to that and uh, had emailed me about it, I did go it over and I am working on replying to you. but. Uh, absolutely you guys are a lot better at coding than i am so there, there's absolutely some things i'm looking into so thank you for sending me that